How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massive Beer Reviews, back with Itty Bitty Beer Time. You know how much I love Itty Bitty Beer Time, and when it comes from a good brewery, just kind of get all tingly up inside, because hopefully you're in for good beer time. We're drinking today, the Bellwoods Brewing, is there a fodder? Fermented Grisette. Now, Grisettes, they're basically just, you know, they're like farmhouse sales. They're a subset of farmhouse sales. They're, for me, people say, you know, they'll be this way or that way. Um, as far as how they drink. To me, they're just almost like the crispy boy version of a, uh, of a, uh, of a, like a farmhouse saison. Um, a little bit tart. Um, uh, usually citrus forward. But uh, they can vary from place to place. You don't see a ton of them. You actually didn't see a ton of them until Americans kind of went ape shit and started making a ton of them. So it's kind of cool to see them kind of pop in and about. I know it's one of my uh, uh, buddies, Keith. You know Keith? You've all met Keith before. It's one of his favorite beer styles. Uh, but this beer comes from my buddy George. Uh, he was up at Bellwoods and was kind enough to grab one for me. I mean, he knows me. Um, you know, 3% photo aged. We're going to be on the right track, hopefully. Now, I should actually explain more of this stuff. Because I take for granted that a lot of people, besides my Dirty Glass Mafia, know this stuff about beer. So, uh, Fodor. What's a Fodor? Fodor's a big barrel. That's it. End all be all. I mean, it's literally just a gigantic barrel. Um, usually about three times the size of a regular production barrel. That's pretty much it. They, you can you can actually prime them with uh, spirits and stuff like that. But pretty much for oak aging, uh, wood aging, they kind of uh, put a bunch of different beers in it over time. And they can kind of re-season it and stuff like that. But anyway, how does this beer look? I mean, she looks like Cezanne. She's almost got this vibrant, like, um, yellow highlighter kind of hue to it. Super vibrant in color. Um, a bit of haze on her, a decent amount of haze on her, and a soft head that dissipated really quick. It was just off-white. Label-wise, Bell would always kills it on the label front, so I'm not going to sit here and talk about how much I love that label, because if you don't like it, you don't know. Style. Wow, that was harsh. Uh, but yeah, look at how pretty that looks. I mean, she looks the part of, like, a unfiltered kind of farmhouse ale. Let's get a nose. <sighs> this immediately pops off to me like a zesty botanical. I mean, almost like a gin without the gin, without the actual spirit alcohol uh, portion of the show there. Heavily lemon. Lemon. Lemon? It's not a little, like, thing that jumps off a wall and dies. Um, it is lemon-leaning. It's very citrus, but it's not, like, a sick, over-the-top citrus. It's bright yellow citrus. But there's this botanical thing to it, like almost like very ger general or generic or gentle. God, the words are hard this time. Very gentle kind of floral vibes to it. Like I'm getting like a little bit of lavender, a little bit of rose hips, a little of those kind of things. It reminds me very much of that. So it's got the soft flowery vibe to it. A nice pop of that non-aggressive rounded edge kind of lemon vibe. <sighs> A softness, a little bit of soft oakiness, a little bit of soft vanilla. There is a tartness there. And it's just like a, a very wheat-based, straw, hay-based kind of kind of uh, malt base on it, too. So it's very bright, very citrus. A lot of times I kind of think of uh, farmhouse ales um, in general or more of a spring-summer beer. For some reason, grisettes always go a little bit kind of more of a fall beer for me i don't know if it's like kind of the everything gets a little bit gray out and stuff like that maybe that's what it is because that means a little gray and um i think it's where is that french i believe and um so i don't know if that's kind of subliminal messages there or something like that but i always kind of kind of gravitate towards grisettes more in the fall than anything else so yeah she smells awesome yeah let's dive in cheers This is the actual quintessential Merriam-Webster dictionary of chuggable. It's not sweet. There's enough sweetness, and that's probably the biggest emphasis I can put there. Enough sweetness to make the beer really work, because it's not sweet at all. But there's a nice bittering component. There's a nice dry component. There's a soft tartness to it. All of it's relatively large for its ABV. Keep that in mind, 3%. But it has it just enough sweetness to let those kind of carry the day and just not be an overly dry, um, just kind of, uh, I don't want to say forgetful, but very kind of one-sided kind of beer. That sweetness adds a little balance, adds a little bit of counterweight 
on the one side of things to kind of make this beer kind of sing. Um, I mean, soft citrus vibes. You get that kind of botanical floral thing in there. It's a little bit more kind of um, uh, kind of a, a, like a medley, just a bunch, a bushel, a uh, basket of flowers kind of thing going on. Kind of when I use to say like a tropical fruit punch, kind of the mixture of all fruits, fruit medley kind of thing going on, but more of a floral component. So you do get those kind of floral vibes from it, those perfumey vibes without being over the top. That citrus definitely still kind of lemon leaning, but it's quite nice. I don't know if that's coming from the yeast or hops used in there. There's a nice soft bittering to it too. That marries really well with a soft dryness uh, from the fodor um, and kind of just adds all that with that sweetness on the other end. It just, it's teetering on all those other sides, but that sweetness needs to be there in order for this beer to not go, go head over heels. I could drink 8 billion of these. I mean, you're talking 3%. Once you get below 3%, magic really happens. And by that, I mean no one really does sub 3% beers. Bellwoods is one of those breweries that kind of ventures into the low ABV realm way deeper than a lot of people do. You know, you have your Allagashes. They flirt in the 3% range. You have your Bissels do much of the same thing. And there's a lot of breweries that kind of dabble in there. But Bellwoods has gotten down there. I mean, they've gotten in the sub 1% range when it comes to alcoholic beers. And they do such a great job of it. Like, if someone were to ask me the question, what what brewery you wish was close to where you live, it might be Bellwoods. I mean, it might kind of, you know, say from North America maybe, kind of exclude some of those European ones. It might be Bellwoods. Because all their beers that I've had from them, I've really, really enjoyed. And they really kind of nail these low ABV beers that really make my heart go flutter. And this one is much the same. So, again... Soft citrus vibes, a little bit of soft bittering, a little bit of soft dryness. Um, that vanilla that's in the nose doesn't really carry over in the taste, but it's definitely there in the nose. It just comes off as an infinitely drinkable beer. A nice soft dryness, enough to make you want to go back, but that sweetness, like I said, balances everything off to make a really tasty fucking drinkable, chuggable grisette. Again, the smaller ABV, crispy boy version of a, a Saison. It kind of rings true in this beer very much. So let's talk about it. It's one of the better grisettes I've had as of late. This might be the best grisette I've ever had, to be perfectly honest with you. And I take that with, like, um, non-adjunct-laden grisettes. Uh, you want to call a fodor an adjunct? Sure. You know, added components to it. But I mean more spirit-based or heavily kind of um, uh, uh, fruit or uh, extra added bits and pieces. You know, kind of, to me, a, a grisette is meant to be kind of barrel-aged, fodor-aged. So for me, it's still more of a core four beer. And this is probably one of the best ones, if not the best one I've ever had. Valued availability? No idea. I was lucky enough to have my buddy George pick one up for me. I am a lucky guy like that. So thank you very much, buddy. And leave you with, if you like what we like this beer, if you like grisettes, obviously, uh, if you like Cezanne, if you like farmhouse ales, and you just, you know, you want something that retains that uh, soulfulness that a lot of really well-made saisons um farmhouse sales and grisettes have but in a low abv package i mean you're three percent three m f and percent here so if those are the kind of beers that really turn you on this is going to make you go gaga so there you go another review in the books hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as i did down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive and want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review hopefully you enjoy a nice little uh grisette right now and hopefully see you next time cheers <laughs>